when designing a continuous flow gas lift installation for a well, one of the many factors that must be considered is the surface conditions under which the installation must operate. In this fourth film in our series of gas lift films, we will look at the effect surface conditions have on gas lift performance. There are two aspects of surface conditions to be considered. First, flowing wellhead pressure, and second, input gas pressure and volume. Let's talk first about how flowing wellhead pressure affects well performance. Flowing wellhead pressure. Before we vary the flowing wellhead pressure to see what happens, let's look at the basic well conditions. We see that liquid production is 700 barrels per day. The input gas pressure is 590 PSI and that 300 MCF per day of gas is being injected through the bottom valve at 2350 feet. Formation gas production is zero. The flowing bottom hole pressure is 600 PSI. The flowing wellhead pressure is 200 PSI and this pressure is the total of the separator pressure and the surface line loss from wellhead to the separator. The wing valve is open and there is no choke in the surface flow line. Now we are ready to change the flowing wellhead pressure. Let's reduce it 100 PSI, from 200 PSI to 100 PSI while still injecting gas at the 300 MCF per day rate. Re-examining the well, we see that after reducing the wellhead pressure, the liquid production has increased from 700 to 900 barrels per day. And the flowing bottom hole pressure has decreased to 540 PSI. The 100 PSI reduction in wellhead pressure has caused a liquid production gain of 200 barrels per day by allowing a 60 PSI reduction in the flowing bottom hole pressure. We see that it is advantageous to decrease flowing wellhead pressure if we want to increase production. So we want to find and eliminate those things that increase flowing wellhead pressure. Before we look at some of the things that can increase flowing wellhead pressure and hence decrease production, let's look at how the fluid normally behaves in a gas lift well. Although this form of gas lift is called continuous flow gas lift, and even though gas is injected into the tubing string continuously through the gas lift valve, liquid production at the surface in actual field installations would look very similar to what we see here. We see liquid slugs and gas bubbles arriving every few seconds at the wellhead. Our pressure gauge records a series of uniform pulses as successive liquid and gas slugs arrive at the surface. In this instance, the flowing wellhead pressure is ranging from 100 PSI to 130 PSI. This operation is satisfactory. Now let's see what happens if a tubing choke is placed in the flow line at the wellhead. Since we do not have a choke body in the flow line, we will partially close the wing valve to produce the same effect. Our pressure gauge is now registering surges of from 100 to 300 PSI, which are much higher than the previous 100 to 130 PSI surges. The higher pressure is caused by the liquid slugs not being able to flow into the surface line quickly enough due to the choke restriction. Checking our liquid production, we find that it too is fluctuating greatly from 500 barrels per day to 800 barrels per day, or averaging 650 barrels per day. Compared with the production of 900 barrels per day before the choke was installed, we find that the choke caused a loss of 250 barrels per day. Thus, a choke in the surface flow line will give an increased flowing wellhead pressure, 
which in turn will reduce production. Also, a choke can cause very erratic well surging. In other words, chokes in surface flow lines seriously reduce the efficiency of a gas lift installation. Other conditions that can be as detrimental as a choke to efficient gas lift operations are many elbows and changes of direction in the flow line at the wellhead, a flow line that is too small in diameter or excessively long, paraffin buildup in the surface flow line, needlessly high separator pressures. All the foregoing items tend to hold the flowing wellhead pressure needlessly high and consequently cause reduced production. Input gas pressure and volume. Let's move on now to our second category of surface conditions that affect gas lift performance. Input gas pressure and volume. The spacing between gas lift valves and the maximum depth of the valve installation are dependent upon the input gas pressure. All other conditions being equal, higher input gas pressure allows the gas lift valves to be run deeper and to be located further apart. And as was shown in film number three, the deeper the point of gas injection, the higher the liquid production. Using the well model, let's illustrate the effect of input gas pressure on production. Here we see the input pressure gauge reading 590 PSI. This setting is producing 1,000 barrels per day and using 300 MCF per day of input gas at a gas to liquid ratio of 300 to 1. If we simulate a rapid 50 PSI drop in input gas pressure by reducing the input pressure gauge reading to 540 PSI, we see that the input gas volume drops from 300 MCF per day to 140 MCF per day because of the reduced differential across the input choke. As a result, production has declined from 1,000 to 700 barrels per day and the gas to liquid ratio has decreased from 300 to 1 to 200 to 1. With this reduced gas to liquid ratio, the flowing pressure gradient has increased. As a result, the pressure in the tubing, opposite the number 3 gas lift valve at 2350 feet, exceeds the input gas pressure of 540 psi. So gas cannot flow from the casing to the tubing at this valve. Gas is now being injected in the next valve up the hole at 1,990 feet. Thus we see that only a 50 psi drop in input gas pressure has caused a severe loss of production. This loss can occur even if the pressure loss is of only short duration, as little as 15 minutes. Restoration of the original input gas pressure does not necessarily return the well to the previous production. From the foregoing, it should be apparent that maintenance of the input gas pressure at the design value is equally as important as having adequate input pressure. Insufficient compressor capacity or inadequate gas distribution lines can cause swings of more than 100 psi in the gas pressure at the wellhead. Intermittent gas lift installations that are fed from the same gas supply headers as continuous lift installations can cause repeated imbalances and pressure losses that make maintenance of a steady uniform input gas system pressure quite difficult. To summarize, Surface conditions that adversely affect gas lift performance are A. High flowing wellhead back pressure that is due to 1. Tubing choke 2. Small diameter surface flow line 3. Long surface flow line 4. Too many elbows 5. Paraffin buildup 6. 
needlessly high separator pressure, and B, input gas of too low a pressure or with wide pressure fluctuations.